Hi everyone, welcome to Recover and Rise, our third session today. Um, my name is Cheryl Tipton, I'm your host for this series of webinars. Um, Susan, if you could just turn your camera off for a moment, if you don't mind, that would be lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so, Recover and Rise brought to you from West Sussex County Council and their partners. And today we're going to be talking about improving our websites with a brilliant presentation from Mike Humphrey. Um, before we start on that, I just want to talk to you quickly about Remo and the platform that we're on, which is a really brilliant networking platform. Just a couple of housekeeping points so everybody's aware. Once the presentation start, as you'll see, um, I'm sure you can probably see the same as me, everybody's little, little icons at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can't actually move around whilst the presentation's um, in action, but when we go to our networking session at one o'clock, you will be able to move around tables by simply double clicking on your table that you want to go on to. Um, you'll also see that there's a help desk. So if you do get stuck, hop over to the help desk and one of us will be able to help you. There's a one-to-one -one area as well, and there's a quiet area. It's, it's a really fantastic platform. Um, once Mike starts speaking, there'll also be an opportunity to pop questions in the Q&A. If you could use the Q&A rather than the chat function, that would be great. And then I can try and feed Mike all the questions. On Tuesday, we had absolutely loads of questions, which would be brilliant. And anything he can't get time to answer today, he has promised me that he'll answer by email. So please do keep flooding those questions in. Um, I've got a couple of slides to share with you um, very quickly, um, just about the series and what we're up to. So if you can, everybody can see, whoop. If you can see my slides, yeah, lovely. So Recover and Rise, obviously we're all about activating online and getting everybody online and to make the most of their business online. We've got four series in this um, programme. The first one, obviously, getting online. Then we go into customers and marketing, systems and productivity and growth and expansion. So if you want to, you can actually book onto everything which is absolutely brilliant. And if you do enjoy the um, webinars and you do think it's really good, if you could tell your um, contacts and get everybody to join in, that would be even better. It's a completely free program. So um, you also benefit from support from our digital champions who I'm going to introduce to you later on. And there's lots of also grant funding that we can signpost you to. So there's lots of free support um, and lots of really good stuff. So we're here today improving your website and we're going to hear from Mike Humphrey um, about just really how to improve your website, how some top tips really to make things work better, how to analyze. And Mike's got a case study also of where they got involved um, to help somebody improve their website. Mike is hanging around, so he's going to be here for our networking session as well. Um, let me pop those away. And um, without further ado, Mike, would you like to um, come up onto the screen and um, start your presentation for us? You just need to pop your camera and your mic on, Mike. Aha! Uh, got... I can see your presentation. I can see you. There you are. Brilliant. So Mike um, has been working in the digital space for over 20 years and helping all sorts of companies online. Um, before forming Digibubble, Mike worked for all sorts of organisations, AOL, Financial Times, OpenX and Microsoft. So over to you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, so, yeah, as um, Cheryl's alluded to, we're going to be having a quick walk through how to improve your website. And um, the fundamental here is that we've come at this at, from more of a strategic level. Um, so just giving you some thought processes and some preparation exercises before you start entering into actually the execution of your plans. And I know that there's a number of seminars within the series that are going to be covering things like e-commerce, security, marketing. So, um, yep, yeah, without further ado, we go into it. So we have a, a, a quick look here at what's coming up. So we'll do a quick introdu introduction into me and, me and my business just to validate why I'm sat in front of you today. Um, and then we'll have a look at the most important element for me when considering success online is, is how you plan for that success. So looking at your preparation, um, where you look at your measurements, what your key performance indicators are and how you um, understand where your return on investment is coming from. 
Then we'll have a look at the core fundamentals. So these are areas that you can do very quickly and easily with yourself or alongside your developers or your marketing teams um, to improve the, the, the bare bones, the fundamentals of your website. So around media, photos, videos, content, some SEO thoughts, and then the, some of the most important is call to actions. Um, we've also got some tools for you. So we're having a look at what we've got is an ROI calculator to calculate your ROI. Um, our recently launched health checker tool that we've got on our website. And also we, sh we share in a keyword research tool so you can really start to understand what's happening and why. And then we've got a quick case study to go through of where we've applied some of these thought processes to a client's business locally. Um, so quickly looking at us, we are um, Digibubble. We are um, a full service digital agency. We're based just inside uh, or just outside Manor Royal on the Beehive Ring Road. Um, we fundamentally started in 2006. Um, so it's Keith, who's on the call, is a technical lead. My background is digital advertising and marketing. And between the two of us, we both had a broad range of skills that we found are in demand and increasingly so with the current climate. Um, we both had experience in project managing large digital projects. And what we identified is that there is a consistent issues between the requirements of the business and what their service provider actually gave them. So from that, we, we, we got some real good ground early 2015. And uh, by the end of 2015, we'd both quit full-time employment and Digibubble was formed. Um, fundamentally, what we offer is a, a central controlling hub for your um, for your digital touch point. So your website is functional, it's secure, it's well maintained and technical. So you know that you've got peace of mind that it's well looked after by professional grade equipment. Um, we then work to evolve and understand what the client needs and evolve how they, they present themselves online. And we do that through various digital advertising approaches, some enhanced functionality and tools like e-commerce systems, payment gateways, booking, lead generation. Um, key for us is analytics and reporting. So we put um, Google Analytics in or advanced analytics tools in that allows us to really sort of reinforce where we're seeing success, track that return on investment and make adjustments to the overarching strategy for you to ensure you see that success online. Um, we also offer content management. So writing that content, providing blogs, news, thought leadership and media. Um, and we also police and maintain third party management. So how you work with MailChimp, how you work with link partnerships for your for your SEO, um, Google My Business, these sort of platforms. So that's us. We're Digibubble. Our hook line is that we are your formula for digital success. And part of that is, is what we're about to talk about here. So the first stage of improving your website is planning. So in the previous series, we had looked at the fundamentals of how we build and technically manage a website and what you need to consider and what your options are in terms of how your website is built. So if you if you do need some information, if you didn't see that presentation, let anyone in the team know here and we can get that to you. I'm happy to have a chat through those elements. So now we're taking the level that we've assumed you've got a good website that you're relatively happy with. You're looking to improve it and how we go around that. So the first, start, the first sign of, um, of preparation and planning is that your improvement should be calculated and researched. Um, if you are going into your website and making adjustments on the fly without any real insight or justification, so you haven't looked at analytics, you haven't looked at market trends for the season, um, these sporadic adjustments are really going to limit your success and you will just you'll never really be able to signpost exactly what the winning point was because you never really understood when when and why you made the changes. So identify your website goals, identify your audience and really put a pin in what makes you unique. So there needs to be something that separates you from the competition and allows you to broadcast that. Um, so measuring digital marketing is key so if you, if you hear what we're having a look at is a, a quick look at how it was so 10 years ago maybe even five years ago the evolved, the market's really evolved in the last five years in particular so your return on investment primarily in the past was based on revenue and an increase in sales if i ran an ad online did it make more money that's that was the the black and white um there really wasn't appropriate analysis there was a 
bit of analytics there wasn't the heat mapping available there wasn't um like tools like search console within google available that allows you to really break down what is going on how people get to your website and what they do um a lot of marketing tools assumed success so, oh well we ran a campaign on the 3rd of march and we saw a sale on the 4th so it's got to be that 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 campaign we run it's an assumption so now tools are allowing you to actually pinpoint that to the minute where that came from so based off of the the, the historic elements of, of digital marketing it was difficult to track success and from that it was difficult to really shape a strategy moving forward or a plan of attack for how you evolve how it is now is that we've got huge range of analytics tools that are available for you and we can break down your positions in google organic search we can see what percentage of top page of google you you the the amount of times you've appeared on google as a percentage in position one um websites now aren't well they can be a, a, a just a standalone static source of information but now they're a central hub they control multiple digital touch points email marketing seo um, pay-per-click all of these buzzwords and terms are all coming through so now um, uh, to win online you need to have real good control of that central centralized hub and make sure that it's communicating with your your digital touch points efficiently and that the 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 tools that you're using are appropriate um, the systems and these digital hubs are allowing real-time tracking so we can see minute by minute what the immediate uptake of a social media campaign might be and how how quickly that drops off so you're allowed to influence your advertising regularity um, you're able to split test and align your reports and your insights into what worked and what didn't work and and, and align two ideas within the business and then come to a conclusion at the end um, and we're also able to look back historically we're able to really see right okay this is what went this went on in this time last year for Christmas we know that fidget spinners were the trend this last year this time is going to be those little pop things we can start seeing what season do these trends come in and how well do these trends react through Christmas or Easter or these areas so we're re really able to get some good level insight into how the history of your your industry works online um, so in terms of understanding your objectives and looking at key performance indicators it's key that you identify what is success what does success looks like um, so fundamentally a lot of the times this comes down to revenue so if we're running an e-commerce shop or um, anything that's like a lead generation how many times the phone rings um, you need to think about is revenue your main success driver not everything is tied to that what we might be looking at is share of voice actually has the number of branded search the amount of people searching for my company online gone up with the right tools and the right controlling hub we're able to really give some insights into whether that's right or not and if you do focus on that that revenue when you're looking at your key performance indicators what you could be doing isn't really impacting on the true effectiveness of your marketing if you if you haven't planned and you haven't looked at what your the length of your lead time looks like so if it takes six months for a, a client to come in but you're only focusing on the immediate revenue within two or three months of running a campaign then you're going to be attributing failure to something that we don't really know whether it's one or not so really have a look and think about what are my key performance indicators these kpis and am i able to attribute a revenue value to that and if i can that starts to build the foundations for how we start to improve and evolve your presence online um, so some digital key performance indicators just a few examples here um, so you can have a look at unique monthly visitors so how many people have clicked through your website over a, a set period of time um, we can look at a cost per lead so how much does it cost for you to get the phone to ring or for somebody to pick up a uh, to complete an inquiry form and you have that received in your e e inbox um, your cost per acquisition so how much does it cost you um, to acquire a new customer um, if you're in the e-commerce world looking at your average order value can be quite key so we know that we've got 10 customers and they spend an average of 30 pounds and we know roughly speaking we've got 300 pounds to play with to try and get 10 people through the door 
Um, lifetime value is key. So if you have returning customers that come back again and again and again, you've got that a real good sticky business for your customer customer commitment. Then look at that lifetime value because then you can be looking at spending more to onboard because you know that two or three years down the line, that's going to easily make up for for the for the initial outlay. Um, and then lead to close ratio is very much an internal process, but there's elements we can do to improve the quality of the leads that are coming through to your business. So how many leads do we need to send you for you to close a new uh, a new client? If that's one in 10, that's relatively low. Um, but if we increase the quality and get that to one in three, then we've made a real big step forward in terms of, of, of the success you'll see from your marketing without necessarily having to spend more on doing it. We just You're able to target more efficiently and really work with your audience more to increase the quality of your leads. Um, so one more of these is that these the key performance indicators these are particularly around brands so if you don't have um, a, a, like a, an immediate purchase that could be made or a contact form or a contact point what we can have a look at is your branded search lift so like I said previously how many people are searching for your business online and then from that what happens do they come on the site and disappear do they look at a competitor we can we can find that information out we can have a look at your average position so if within organic in particular are you position one against your branded term and if you're not we can start looking at a performance indicator within your marketing to get you to that top position um, and then also look at non-branded click-through rates, really separate out your branded search and your non-branded search. So if you're an opticians, so we look at Hawley opticians as a, as a keyword, the branded search lift can be easily measured and influenced because that's your branded term. But glasses online is going to be a very different kettle of fish. So you really need to have a look at the percentage of interest you have in your keywords your organic listings around non-brand related um, search terms and the and the respective click-through rate so moving on to there so we just have a quick look at ROI there is a another seminar happening within the series that's looking at ROI in some great depth um, but fundamentally your return on investment is monitoring your Pro, the profit generated from marketing and weighing that up against what it costs for you to create and deploy that marketing campaign and there's a little formula that works to give you there that gives you just a rough percentage about what your return on investment we generally see ROI comfortably for something like e-commerce we'd expect to see a, a 10 times return on, on what our client is seeing from the advertising they're putting into the system. And I'll go into that in a bit more detail in the case study because we've, we've got a case study for an e-commerce client um, that will be joining us. Uh, so just a quick look at what you can anticipate in terms of conversion rate and that return on investments for some of the main uh, the advertising mediums out there. So Google AdWords is a market leader and is well established. The conversion rate um, as an average across Google is around 2.4%. So if you if you have 100 clicks, you'd expect to see two, maybe three clients come in through those 100 clicks. The top 25% of advertisers, so the people that are, are positioned highly, are bidding more aggressively, are a little bit more switched on to, to how their approach to digital, are seeing almost double, a little bit more than double um, the conversion rate. The top 10 are seeing double of that again. So the more you spend, if you spend it intelligently, you can have a real big impact on your bottom line in terms of the incremental increase of, of the interest you see in your business. Um, Bing is a is a very different creature. So while Google controls about 80% of the search market, Bing is a very different audience. We tend to um, see that it's an older market. They're less techni technically um, engaged. So fundamentally, Bing with, within the industry has looked at the, the, the users that didn't know how to change their default search engine. But that is reflected in how they behave online. And you see that within the top 10% of the advertisers there, there's a really big increase in the amount. So if you get into Bing and you're in the top 10% position on, on Bing, you're going to start seeing results that far outweigh Google. What you need to balance is the fact that Google's got a lot more volume. So these are the two areas. It's a, it's a quality and a quantity argument between Bing and Google. But 
split test, work at them as two independent audience buckets and change your wording, change your messaging accordingly. Um, for email marketing um, with, with the birth of GDPR, the quality of the data that's sitting behind a business's um, email marketing list has increased. And from that, there's been a noticeable increase in the open rate from emails. Um, so around 42% of a quality data list um, from, from your direct customers would be opened. And we see around an 8.3% click-through rate from content within the emails into the respective um, destination pages. So that's a quick run through of just how you plan and there's some of the key areas you need to consider. So now what we, we look at is how we improve your website and what the fundamental, we've got three key areas that we'll be looking at here. The first is your photos and your videos and your the media that you choose to use on your website. Um, we, we covered this a little bit in the last one, but to go through it again is, is, is vital. Have, having your photographs be authentic and genuine so shutterstock and pixabay these sort of areas of, of, of stock images are are really suitable for a business they're a great tool but if you're really trying to send over the message that you're genuine you're trying to get that audience buy into your business you're trying to trigger those emotional values within your audience then you need to be genuine you need to be trustworthy and you need to be authentic and that can be reflected in in your your media so the photos you use if you've got team photos get into the office take teams of take photos of your team if you've got a product range you know take a picture of them in situ on the shelves in your shop with customers next to them being interested avoid the stock images um, when you control your media and your photos um, Work with some branding elements, either a consistent color overlay, a consistent filter, some ele element that allows you to be consistent with your style and branding across your digital touch points. So both the website, email marketing, any display advertising that you run, having that brand consistency gives the consumer the peace of mind that they're sitting within the same sphere they're, they're always working with the same business it's not a different department it's not third outsourced to a third party ghostwriting lead gen system it's consistent and that really does make a lot of difference when you're trying to improve your website um, quality is key so if you are taking your own photos let's not just do it through an iphone or anything like that you know get your good camera out and if you if you don't have the tools or you, the confidence to be able to do it yourself then commit to a videographer or a creative team or a photographer to provide that content for you um, make sure it's relevant so you, you signpost people around your website um, and then the media reflects the the, the point of the pages or, or, or the media that they're absorbing make sure that that content's relevant and always consider that file type size and and the type of media that you're using if you build um, content onto your website photographs is a good example videos is another good example and um, that are just the large raw files that you've just plugged in from your sd card and dragged them straight onto your website they are going to be enormous files for your website to to, to manage and you'll have to increase the load speed of that website and it's going to start to negatively impact the user experience on your website so really consider that file size compress the images and resize the images so they're, they're appropriately sized but also the file size is quite small so keep that under under a few megabytes at least um <clears throat> excuse me so content and seo so S seo is is really key so where you've got paid advertising on the search engine takes the predominant place um, the rest of that page is ranked according to a number of variants that the search engines have put into place so seo is fundamentally the practice of getting targeted traffic to your website from those organic listings um, generally speaking organic listings see a higher conversion rate they see higher customer engagement they see a higher click-through rate and seo is very good for establishing trust so if you do it right you you the audience knows that you've been put there because you've met a number of predetermined parameters from the search engine you haven't just paid the highest number to get to the top of that page you've committed to good content um, you've committed to researching keywords that are 
applicable and you also communicate a marketing message intelligently and that really does make a big difference to the traffic delivery onto your website um, so we're firm believers that your content strategy and your seo should work in tandem you need to have a look at what keywords are working and are most popular at, at that time of, of year or you know work a few months ahead of yourself so now we've got an eye on christmas so what's the keywords that people are going to be looking for at christmas this year and then what you start doing is building content around that to make sure that you make reference to these focus keywords that you really want to drive drive traffic through and at the end of this presentation i've got a few links for some tools that will will give you this insight um research extensively so don't be afraid to sit there and scroll through other people's insights you know two three years ago what were what were the trends what did people search look on the google adwords um the keyword planner and really understand what what impact seasonality you have so we want to make sure that we if we're going to go into the efforts of writing and committing to content we want to know that this has got a purpose and we know that we've got an end goal there is a kpi there that we're trying to achieve um again authenticity turns it turns up so make it original because if you start getting flagged against plagiarism if you start getting flagged against duplicate content from platforms like linkedin or something like that you'll get penalized so make your content purposeful but also make sure you load your content onto your website first don't load it into linkedin and facebook and then do your website because the timestamps will attribute facebook to all of your hard work so your website is the central hub and then what we do is we use your website to communicate what you want to Facebook not vice versa um, so manage your brand and non-brand strategies um, separately so we mentioned in a previous slide um, it's, it's key to make sure that you you've got a strategy for getting yourself and your own company name at the top of uh, at the top of organic search um, what we then do is once you're there let's look at the main keywords that we want to target ourselves these non-branded keywords that are a little more generic and competitive but they're the ones that we really want to start benchmarking um, the benchmarking success against and build your content uh, build your SEO into the very fabric of your content strategy you know this should be something where you can build out a list of 100 keywords you're going to be targeting over the next year and start thinking about the titles of the blog posts you're going to write or the descriptions of the products you're going to be putting into into the website and the lead up to christmas because we know that this group of keywords is very popular um really give the terms and the and and the keywords in particular real good thought about what people are going to be searching for why and when so moving on there into calls to actions is, is is surprisingly common that we have clients come to us that will never ask their customers to do anything online so customers land on a website and actually don't know what they're doing or why if you don't have an online shop and you're not telling me to call you i'm a little bit lost as, a, as an end user to think about what i'm going to do so get those call to actions and then don't be afraid to signpost customers into exactly what you what they're there for shop now have a discount code you call us for a free audit into your brand strategy and we have it with our health checker is a really good opening conversation part so we encourage people to complete um, these questionnaires and engage with the business so make sure your audience knows why they're why they're on your website and align that call to action to a kpi so we know that somebody completing a lead inquiry on your form has got a value because we know 10 of those are going to turn into one piece of new business with a lifetime value of three thousand pounds we're starting to get an idea of how we're asking customers online to work with us and what the value of those positive actions are so a few tips for your call to actions is is be clear you know everybody wants to just be direct tell them tell them why you're there hi click here to buy now you know click here for a free consultation um use contrasting colors really make that call to action stand out don't be afraid to have it flash at them and tell them that this is what we want you to do you know thank them be polite but you can still ask them quite nicely what you want them to do um understand the value of that action as we said with your kpis and broadcast the process so if, if if it is okay click here for a quote when they do click there 
communicate to them what's going to go on. Thank you for complete this form now. One of our team will be back to you within 24 hours with a full breakdown of how we can help. Um, track and monitor that success. So put conversion tracking on thank you pages. So we're able to then say, okay, somebody searched online for website quotes. They've landed on our website. They've gone into this particular page has got a call to action for a we, uh, website health checker. They've completed the inquiry and then our pixels fired. So we're able to see the complete journey. And then we're able to start eliminating areas that we think we're losing interest or we're losing traffic and start to increase the lead quality that's coming through to your business. So always test it, always analyze it and always evolve it. It's very rare that as marketers, we hit the nail on the head first time. It's a process of learning and we do that alongside you and your business goals and what you what your perceived success is. Um, so that's, that's call to action. Um, so what I'm going to have a look at here is is we've got a, a customer that we recently took on. So we've been working with them for about six months now. Um, so it's a customer called Flax Farm. Some of you may know them. They sell, um, they're, they're the manufacturers of cold pressed linseed oil, um, which for me was a an, an unknown area, actually an enormous business with huge vats in a warehouse just south of Horsham. Um, well-established business. Claire, the business owner, has has always driven the business through her passion, through her experience, through events that she goes to, picking up the phone and talking to people. So it's been very much focused on her expertise and her picking up the phone or people calling in to place orders. Um, only 20% of sales came from her online platform. She'd built the website herself um, with a few helps over the years. So when we got into it, it was a bit clunky. It was a bit all over the place. Um, she had very limited tools and she had very limited understanding of how to really make those tools work for her business. Um, our recommendation was that she really needed to go at a website and do a full, full go over it. It had been years in the making and it had been tested and just Googled and learned. So it's a, it a bit of a mess and it's, it still is today. Um, but she was hesitant to evolve into a new full spec online product until she'd seen that online had started making some some headway to justify the costs of ev evolving that digital platform and for us that's fine we, we we come in from a marketing perspective it's not all about just building the website from 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 the from the get-go we can work with the tools you've got and with the right tracking and analytics we can really start to build insight and forecast what success looks like in the future so our recommendations off, off the bat is that we need to start looking at SEO and we need to look in at content. Um, she had a tremendous amount of knowledge that you could only ever get from her at a farmer's market or if you phoned. Um, so what we thought is, well, that's build this into content that you can share online. Position yourself as a thought leader within the world of cold press linseed oils and, and, the, and the, the health benefits that that has over time. Highlight the products alongside that. So we know that linseed is a good source of omega-3. We know that it's good for gluten, gluten intolerant. If they've got porridges and these sort of things that they do for, for plant-based diets, vegan diets, um, people are specialist high protein diets, but are vegetarian and start using your content and your SEO as an education piece to actually inform people before they get to the phone call, before they get to Claire, give them that base level of, of information. Um, at no stage had Claire really given any thought to what success looks like online, looking looking at what the markup within her product was, what percentage of her profit she wanted to spend on, on, on marketing. She was just like, I'll just have the sales. As long as they come, I'm happy. And she looked sort of just at the just at the bottom line yeah business is still good we'll carry on so we really took some time to start benchmarking what success looks like and what is the percentage of our profit and um that goes into marketing what do, what is it what do our margins look like after we keep the lights on and all the staff paid um so we built out um these success measures and then we started strategizing about how we can utilize paid advertising with google and bing um, we also started to introduce affiliates because she's got a lot of passionate people around her um, that are introducing people, but with no real benefit for them. So an affiliate scheme for, for her and her her network of people really started allowing us to, to use this as a, as a marketing tool. And, and email, email your current customers, thank them for your custom business, 
email them if they've not shot with you for six months let them know that christmas is coming let them know we've got back to basics uh, back to school um lunchbox bars lunchbox bars that are, uh, are really healthy so what what we did is we onboarded direct affiliates we are able to um, calculate that we need to pay them three percent of a basket value um, for their affiliates to to if three percent of whatever they introduce since may we've introduced 23 affiliates to the business um, and now over the last four months we've been generating around 1800 pounds of revenue for that business that was previously never account it was 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 never part of anything um, pay-per-click advertising she's got a modest budget of 800 pounds a month that she's spending but we're now seeing a 10 times return on that so her google in particular will generate between eight and ten thousand pounds of sales on the website which sounds good but for us that's about the 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 bare bones of where that should be if we factor in that she's really only looking at a 30 percent of that is profit and then she's got taken 20 percent of that is going to actually be marketing budget we're about we're about on the nose for what that is looking like as a decent consistent return um the key one there now is that this has been a consistent formula that we've been holding firm for a for a few months so now the next time we have a conversation about how we increase customers we know that we could double the input of advertising spend on Google and know that that's going to still give us that 10x return back. Anything else we evolve out of pay-per-click, we use as a separate budget and we don't disturb this fundamental foundation of, of, of the website. Um, we've also seen a 300% increase in organic sales. Um, so where she's been sharing these thought leader, leader pieces, where she's been educating people that linseed oil is a really good source for omega-3, uh, there's also a number of diets and specialist diets. There's something called the Budwig diet. Um, very niche, but incredibly popular. Now that she's getting ranked against these specialized areas and her products are able to fill the gap in the market for, you know, gluten-free flour supplements or um, oats, people that don't, don't want oats would rather go with linseed porridges or something like that. These guys are coming to her and finding her organically because they're there doing their homework to find out what's the best product for them um so the future is what, what we're looking at now so get another couple of months we're going to be looking at modernizing and expanding her digital presence so she has agreed that now is the time and 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 the and the digital efforts we've made to improve what we've currently got um it is justified us modernizing and expanding her her website in particular looking at specialist areas like pets is really good apparently linseed oil if you've got a horse it's good to put on the hay because it does something with horses but we didn't really want to present that on the website because i don't want to feel like i'm buying horse food it was the area so now we're starting to build out the linseed pet store and um, we're starting to look at budwig diets and specialist diets and personal health connections with personal trainers and plant-based you know bodybuilders and these these specialist diets are really gaining ground and she's planning on building a vertical for each one of these each with a separate online shop selling the same products but built on a different skin um we're ext extending the advertising partners so we know now that where we've worked with affiliates directly and we've got 20 or so um direct affiliates that are working with us now there's networks that can open that up to partners that we would never be able to reach out into the past real scale on on affiliate networks working with large-scale publishers online working with partners within the advertising space to bring and present these the 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 creatives to a much broader market based on a commission on the kpi there is a cpa cost per acquisition and that cost is three percent of basket value um what we're doing is expanding upon that consistent performance so we know that next month that budget is being doubled um, and we also know that there is focus on new campaigns where we're starting to look at trade partners and wholesale where we're starting to work these into having larger bulk buy opportunities so she can start working to having these inside retail establishments so that's our case study um so the last part of the site i just want to i'll leave this next slide up here for for a 
for for anybody to take note i'm going to be circulating this around the group um but the website health checker is a tool that we've recently um developed um and it just gives you um scores about what your website is how well it's performing so against general performance things like speed whether or not you've got page load times um whether you've got the the, the right sort of navigation on the site we also do look at seo elements so you're being ranked and found properly by websites is your security in line is key and we also look at your mobile responsiveness so these four areas come to give you a set percentage um, so you'll see a percentage score, a grade score that we give you, and there's a, 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 a inquiry form there that if you send that through to us, one of our team will get on the phone and talk you through where you can make improvements and if or why we can we can support you. Um, we've also got an ROI calculator. So this is, is an automated calculator that will, if you input the amount of users you've got on your website, um, the number of inquiries your website's currently generating, uh, the the percentage of profit that of your of your overall sales that goes to to marketing answer a few questions and what this gives you is a rough plan of what you could afford to be spending per click um, to get people onto your website so what does the what is the cost of one visitor on your website for you to to see a consistent success according to the parameters within there um, the keyword research tool that is a Google tool. So you may need to open an account. If you don't have an account with Google, you might need one. But that keyword planner will give you all of the forecasting and all of the keyword recommendations, not only against your website, but also what the competitors are doing. And it also breaks down what keywords online are generating the most interest and are, are the most competitive. Um, so they're the, they're the tools that we've got available for you. And I'm, I'm happy to jump on a call and talk you through any of these and just explain it in a little bit more detail um yeah but fundamentally that is us that is the end of my presentation and thank you everybody for your your time and your ears thanks mike that was absolutely brilliant again thank you um second time this week mike's joined us so thank you ever so much for your time thank you. and again i've got a few questions for you if you don't mind yeah um, starting off with a question about SEO, actually, um, one of our um, guests is updating their SEO monthly. Um, that's taking about two months to land onto Google. Um, he's asking how often should he be updating his SEO keywords? I'd say we, you, the SEO keywords is go with new content is the key. Like you say, if you've, if you're running content monthly, that's more than enough. It, it does depend on the industry. If you're in, if you're a news outlet or you're a large-scale publisher providing a lot of articles then more often but for the most part updating your website monthly with fre fresh content around keywords that are appropriate for that time of year is is more than okay uh, we generally go through a bit of an audit on our clients seo at least every three months just to make sure that the keywords that we had put in there a few months ago are are they getting ground are they sticking are they still appropriate? Can we remove that keyword from the piece of con that piece of content and put it into something new, and sort of change the direction of that piece a little? Um, so yeah, I'd say con new content at least once a month, if 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 not more, if you can. Um, but then a good review and a good dig into it every three to six months. Okay, thank you. Um, and Mike, you just mentioned that you do have some review tools on your website that um, we can signpost to. Another question, um, somebody's actually just asked that that they've heard about companies that do reviews of websites for free. Mm. Um, what do you think of them? Are they helpful or are they a bit of a con? <laughs> yeah, well, I say they're only a bit of a con if you give them your money, really. So if, if it's free advice, go and get it. Yeah. and and just use it to inform your decision so we we do a health check there's lots of health checks and it we we do use it as a lead gen tool but what it allows us to do is sort of have a central point of conversation if we know that you're looking at you're concentrating on your performance or your seo or your mobile responsiveness and it allows us to focus on what areas that, that we feel they'd need to evolve into in the future. So it's actually a really good tool 
to to give yourself and equip yourself with oh, well i'm coming to you mike and i want to build my website but i'm really i really want to focus on my page speed and my mobile responsiveness because that's where i'm struggling at the moment mm -hmm. if you if you go in equipped then then you, you're gonna it's just gonna come off better all around really so yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. I and mean, there's quite a few tools out there, aren't there, that people can access for free themselves, like Google Analytics and yeah. so on and so forth. So that would be a really good starting point, wouldn't it, before you go perhaps to a professional or, as you say, you could hop on to somebody who's offering support and advice and take that information for yourself. Yeah. So and you could, yeah. there's and there's enough there's enough developers out there like we we're always happy to sit there and sit on the phone with with anyone and go through it because fundamentally if we give our client well even our prospects just a bit more insight and a bit more information and give them the confidence that actually this guy isn't just out here trying to make a quick buck he's mm -hmm. actually looking long term so we look at our clients well what what do you want this to look like in a year the web build element of it is is fundamentally the easy part really if you've got all your content in line you know what you want to do you you employ us we've got keith my business partner can knock out anything you want online that that can be quite quick and quite painless then what happens is you start thinking well now i've got that i've committed my spend but actually making that work that's where the real journey is that's where the real enjoyable part of the process mm -hmm. is is evolving that product so if you've got a feeling that your web designer hasn't got the the marketing support to make your digital project fly then you've probably got someone there that i'd say go and find someone that's got a blend of the skills that you need yeah, um that'd be the, that'd be the key one for me yeah brilliant um two more questions if i may because i know we're running short of time um but um jackie's asked um you mentioned an industry open rate on emails of 42 percent. i think i think she missed that you mentioned it earlier in mm -hmm. your um presentation um, she's asking, is that B2B? Is it B2C? Is it on sales emails, newsletters, single blast announcements? What sort of, um, where are you getting that sort of open rate from? I think that, I think this is quite a high open rate, isn't it? Yeah, so that is a high, that is, yeah. that's from MailChimp, from a stat that I found at the back end of last week. Um, and they've, they've seen that there's been a huge uptake. So MailChimp are really flying through yeah. lockdown. And I think what, people have started to really consider is that is the engagement of your existing audience that mm. everybody generally bangs the new business drum right let's go get new audience new people where's our next customer coming from they're probably sitting in your computer somewhere already they, they, you've got return customers and you can real add value to those so mm. what mailchimp's been saying is that that's what's been getting the the, the the traction online so mm. processes like gdpr and people being really conscious about data privacy online means that your email quality is increased especially from mailchimp they really they rule privacy with um, privacy with an with an iron glove you really can't get past it so these people have bought into your business they've opted in in the appropriate means you you're 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 familiar with your customers, you're offering discounts, you've got diff varying ways of engaging with them online. So they're seeing a consistent increase of the open rate of emails and seeing as high as 42%. Primarily from what we were seeing, that came from a consumer element mm -hmm. and it was around e-commerce. Um, but we see similar um, we see similar systems to, to, to that doing just as well, things like Sending Blue and all of this sort of stuff. And yeah. just on Vicky's point there, I've seen we we do like Mailchimp. We think Mailchimp is a market leader, but other email providers are available, really. So it's it's down yeah. to think about the tools. What what are you trying to do? Yeah, and, yeah. and match that to the tool that you need to, to you need to work with. Yeah, absolutely, and generate some loyalty from your current customers. Yeah. Um, and Lisa asks, if you have a member section on your website with a login, does SEO exclude this content as it's not available to everyone? Yes. It does. Yeah, uh -huh. because oh, it's it's hidden away from search because you don't, if you've got a members area, you, mm -hmm. you don't want Google signposting into that members area because it will bypass all your logins. So if you're doing exclusive content for members only and someone searches it and it comes up on a page, it sort of eliminates the point of uh, members only so you can within most websites you're able to tell the search engine don't index this page mm -hmm. so within your members area you say right don't don't index these these 20 pages this is my members only area and google will leave it alone mm. oh, that's interesting actually it's very interesting um 
two more before we let you go. Um, how important is it to have a blog? I think we talked about this on Tuesday, actually. Yeah. Well, you said it was a, really important. <laughs> yeah, a blog is a really good way of controlling the content, that you, the quick content that you're putting on these. These article pieces, news pieces, insights, thought leadership, whatever it happens to be, rather than going in and playing around with the real guts of your website, like the foundations of it, page layouts and all of this, and making pages upon pages upon pages to share this content, run it as a blog and then have automatic automatic sections within your page that references that blog. So you put a category in, call it headlines, I don't know what the term would be, and we know that that goes across, there's four stories across the top of your homepage. So then, you guys are sort of as the end users of your website the owner think right all i've got to do is go in write a blog i can still do all of my seo scores it still builds a page but it's set within a fixed template and then we can populate the the bulk of the website with that content additionally rather than getting in and thinking we're going to mess around with the whole function of the website for a for a news article so for us blogs are key if you're going to be regularly sharing news insights thoughts and, and case studies testimonials then yeah get a blog system going brilliant thank you last but not least um cost um this is a this is a it's a difficult question to answer i know but for a new business with a limited spend what would be a good starting budget um for seo i think you can do a bulk of it yourself mm. and i think you you probably going to be more qualified than me to go in and do the keyword research mm. because you already know the market you're one up so if you then came to me and said oh i want somebody to manage my seo write this content we work with a couple of copywriters and it ranges from a hundred pounds for a for a blog up to five six seven hundred pounds for a blog or into thousands for full grade website rights with all of this in mind so um yeah focus on what it is you, you'll you'll want what what is it what is it you're doing it for you do a bit of research with a few free tools there and go into the conversation armed and predetermine your own budget because it's such a wide variety so if you go mm -hmm. to okay i want i want you to look after my seo mike but i don't want to spend more than a hundred pounds a month like okay cool we'd, we'd work something out we'd, we'd shape a package around how, how to evolve that and work that with you yeah. I mean, there's just so many SEO tools online as well, aren't there? Moz.com do a beginner's guide to yeah. SEO and Ahrefs, I think, is the other one. So there's yeah. an awful lot that you can do yourself, isn't there? As, yeah. as well as, um, you know, getting support through this program too. Little yeah, there's that. As well. yeah, I'd say get the foundations. Do the best you can to build your own foundation, your own knowledge, mm. and, and just equip yourself. And don't worry about jumping into a load of tools, whether it's free or not free. Google Keyword Planner and that will give you a breakdown of the last 12 months keyword activity around particular keywords and um, like an ROI calculator so you know roughly speaking what the value you've got for a new visitor landing on your website you've got you've got that map and then like you say call around talk to a few people take the hours consultations with companies mm -hmm. like ours and mm -hmm. go and talk to all of these and you'll soon see whether or not they've got the idea if that synergy if you, you start feeling that bounce if they're excited about it if they're talking about the evolution you think okay this is something i can i can commit to the the, the guinness top will always float brilliant thank you and thank you for your time mike um so as i say you're happy to stay around aren't you during yeah, our networking half hour so if you have any more questions for mike um do please stay on and, and chat with him at one of our tables Lovely. um but for a minute thank or two sure. we'll, say, we'll say bye and cheers. Um, thank you cheers mike thank you um so I'd just like to quickly finish up because we'll go into our networking session but i'd just like to quickly um just pop um my slides up again and share with you the next couple of webinars just so you know um, what they're all around. Um, so if you can see that's Mike's, bear with me. So um, next, oh, we've jumped one, sorry. So Tuesday next week, September 21st, we've got Chris White coming to talk to us. He's police detective inspector and he's going to talk to us about web security. So alongside building your website and thinking about all of the things that go into that, he's gonna talk about how you can keep your business and your data safe online and hopefully give you some confidence to challenge when something doesn't quite look right. It's a massive subject. Um, so Chris is going to come along and talk to us on Tuesday, again at midday. 
And then next Thursday, we've got Malcolm, who's going to pop on and have a chat in a minute, um, talking to us about e-commerce. So if you want to sell online, what to do? Where do you start? What approaches are good? What does e-commerce look like? Um, and he's going to give us a brief intro to measuring performance. So two really worthwhile webinars again next week. Um, and then just very, very quickly, because I know you're probably all keen to have a shuffle around and have a chat. I just want to bring you back to the support that's available. I mentioned it earlier on in the week. We've got free business support from the business hot house and grant funding. We've got business um, grants from Lowcase and we've got knowledge exchanges from Rise. So there's lots and lots of grants and funding and support available out there at the moment to help businesses get online and to help really help everybody prosper post well, post COVID. Um, last but not least, our digital champions. It, there's seven experts that are involved in this series and every week we're going to meet a few of them. They are here to give you specialist support and they are here to give you up to eight hours of free support, depending on what subject. It might be e-commerce, it could be website, it could be security, as we've talked about. It could be strategy, it could be planning, it could be whatever you want. So I'll do a quick intro to them now for you so you know who to talk to. But do take this up. It's a really good part of this program to get you talking to somebody who can really help you completely free of charge. So if I if I move out of my screen and pop back over here, I've got, I think, four digital champions in the room. Um, Susan, Malcolm, Rob and Lisa. So if you let's see if we can bring you all on screen together. If you all want to pop your cameras on and your mics on, there's Malcolm, there's Susan. Hello, Lisa. Lisa. Brilliant. There should be one more. Here comes Rob, yay! So, if in turn, let's go with Malcolm first, because um, he's just because he's top of my screen. <laughs> uh, just a quick 30 seconds, Malcolm, on what you can offer if somebody looks to take business support with you. Uh, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Malcolm. Um, I've spent more than 20 years in digital and mostly e-commerce, uh, working agency side, supporting about 500 e-commerce businesses through marketing, website development and e-commerce site development. Uh, five years as head of e-commerce for uh, FMCG and luxury brands, uh, dealing with budgets and customer acquisition, marketing and email activity. And for the last three years, I work as a freelance uh, specialist helping uh, direct to consumer product based ba uh, brands uh, grow their e-commerce revenues and activities online. So um, I've worked with Coaster Capital for about a year now as well, uh, providing workshops and, uh, and help and resource for those types of businesses. Brilliant. So you're all about e-commerce. So you're the man to come to for e-commerce. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Susan, Susan, you're next on my screen. I'm just going around my screen. So, <laughs> so hi, I'm Susan, hi, I'm Susan Winchester. I've got about 15 years experience working in a business marketing strategy. Um, previously worked in the financial services industry and for the Department of International Trade. And then more recently as a consultant with Coast Capital and then on did big digital transformation product uh, projects and organizations. Um, I basically focus on looking at uh, the, the analyzing kind of like your mi micro and macro environments and looking at how to bring those bits together in order for you to, to grow and uh, and um, develop, in, uh, you know, just online and looking at the whole how, how the jigsaw comes together. So that's um, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Brilliant. Thank you, Susan. So you're, so you're all about strategy then? So, yeah. So it's kind of like uh, analysing and then putting a road back together to look at how you could, you know, how you can benefit. Basically bespoke, looking at the opportunities for, for your business and the industry that you're in. Perfect. Thank you very much. It's, it's really nice to just kind of try to hone in a little bit on what your yeah. particular skills are, because then we know um, our audience can kind of know who they want to you know, make those support appointments with. Rob, you're next on my little screen going round. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Rob Lawrence. I'm a consultant coach and author, and I specialise in uh, e-commerce, uh, marketing and digital transformation. Um, I'm a strategy guy, really, at heart. Uh, so typically I work with SME leaders to really understand where their organisation is relative to competitors, then to identify the uh, opportunities and threats in that market and then help them develop a, a, a really good strategy to develop their capabilities, looking not just at 
websites and, and marketing, but also skills and, and technology and so on. A uh, little bit of background, uh, 20 years as an e-commerce director. Uh, before that, general manager, marketing director. I was e-commerce director for Tui Travel, um, leading digital transformation over 100 companies worldwide, most of them in the UK. Um, and I also set up and led a digital agency in London. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, working with everybody. But if I can't work uh, with you, I'll just blatantly show you my book and you can buy that instead. Um, <laughs> oh, we do like a bit of blatant promotion going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Not subtle, but, um, subtle. you know, it is, a, it, it is a useful book. I mean, a, a completely unbiased opinion, obviously. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Rob. And last but not least, Lisa, I know you're all about systems and productivity, aren't you? I am doing my pitch well, Cheryl, if you can do it for me. Thank you. <laughs> so um, Lisa Kerr, I'm a Deloitte trained chartered accountant um, and 20 year career across um, finance director and chief operating officer type roles um, in professional services and in industry working with small businesses. Um, so I am now a consultant and business coach, and I have a framework called Productivity for Profitability, which looks at um, perspective, performance, people and process to see where you can make the best improvements. In terms of this digital adoption series, series three around systems and productivity is very much my sweet spot. So looking at your operational systems and how you can use digital tools to be more efficient. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And we're really lucky to have these professionals with us um, and, and be able to access this sort of support. It's an absolutely fantastic part of this series. So thank you guys. If you could just all turn your cameras and your mics off, I should wave you all bye bye. And they're all gone like that. Poof, whoosh, whoosh. Okay. Um, I'm going to now move us into our networking. If you can stay with us till half past one, that'd be brilliant. We're going back into the Remo platform as soon as I turn a little button off. So you'll all appear back on the table. If you want to have a chat with Mike, obviously about website um, optimization, then please do, or any of our digital champions. Um, but please stay on with us. And um, just a really big thank you again for coming. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much. <laughs>